Well, uh, Julie Hofek asked me to come and speak at this conference, and at first I struggled with what now, how, I'm not a psych nurse, and the Action Coalition isn't really focusing necessarily on, on psych, um, although we have, we're, we're very open to collaboration. But as I listen today, um, I'm very excited about what you're doing and how it fits in with what the Action Coalition is looking forward to doing, which I'll explain to you later on. So I hope that by the end of my short presentation about the Action Coalition, you will um, come away with ideas on how you can collaborate with us or we can support you in what you're doing. Um, I uh, am proud to say that I'm a founding member of the Nebraska Action Coalition. It was formed in 2011. And uh, there were four of us that, that uh, came together. Three of us went to Washington, D.C. at the invitation of uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation when the report was launched. And uh, the invitation to Washington was, okay, here's the information about what we're recommending. Go back to your states and form a coalition to put these recommendations in action. And uh, so it was Rosanna Morris, myself, um, Marilyn Valerio, who at that time was Dean of Methodist, and then Dr. Linda Lejeur, who was Associate Dean at um, Creighton University. And from there, it's grown. I want to review with you this morning some of the accomplishments that we've had, just to show we do have a track record, and then show you the new direction that uh, we are going to be taking. So um, I start out, first of all, by reviewing um, the future of nursing leading change advancing health. Um, are most of you familiar uh, with that report? We actually go out um, and talk to groups that have not, they're not familiar with this particular report. But the Institute of Medicine studied uh, several years ago how to reform the healthcare system. And what they came up with was nurses should lead that change of the healthcare system. And they issued this report. Now, I want to say if you don't know what the Institute of Medicine is, they are a very prestigious group. They are not associated with the government. It's comprised of the finest scholars in all professions. And everything that they look at is interprofessional. So the report that comes forth is not uh, based on one uh, profession's recommendation. This was a multidisciplinary report. And um, I will tell you that um, it is the most widely read report that has ever been put out by the National Academy. It has been downloaded more than any other report. And uh, basically what it said, there were eight key recommendations that came out of this on how to transform the healthcare system, but we can reduce it down to four uh, major areas. First of all, they said in practice, we need to practice to the full extent of our education and training. Not just nurse practitioners, but baccalaureate degree nurses as well. And you all know in Nebraska we were successful in getting that passed for nurse practitioners. Education-wise, the report said, look, you've got to make nursing education far more streamlined than what it is. Don't make nurses jump through hoops to get to um, that bachelor's degree. And we need to have more nurses with bachelor's degrees. Um, so they, they are promoting a seamless uh, transition from LPN, beginning with LPN, to ADN, to BSN, and, and onward. Uh, leadership, uh, they looked at the fact that nurses don't often sit on decision-making boards. We sit on lots of committees, but we don't sit on a lot of the boards that actually make decisions. Hospital boards, for example. Um, community boards. We're not in the legislature as much as we should be. So uh, the report is focused on making, uh, helping nurses become leaders in redesigning the system. And the last thing was workforce data, and um, Sherry uh, brought this up, I think, touched on it. But we really can't, uh, data, not just in Nebraska, across the country, we really can't get data out that tells us where our psych nurse practitioners are at. We don't know. Uh, medicine does a real good job of that. They know where their specialists are at, but we, our data needs to be cleaned up and uh, streamlined. So, so this is the report. Now, um, from that report, um, they, as I said, in Washington, D.C., they said, go back to your states and do something. Make these 
um, recommendations come to fruition. So that began the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action. And I just want to show you, if you don't know, that there is a website uh, for this. And um, we have quite a, you can go to this website and see all of the different state action coalitions and what they're doing. You can go to that website and see that we have a lot of um, support, not only in the nursing community, but also, um, well, here's the nursing community. All these organizations nationally are supporting uh, the campaign for action. But we, uh, I should, I'd be remiss in pointing out that the leadership is by, uh, our own Susan Hassmiller is leading this. And um, so it's a great website to go to. I encourage you to go to that to look at, to see what's going on across the country. Similarly, the Nebraska Action Coalition, which I referred to, was formed in 2011. Uh, we raised $75,000 and we got matched with that amount of money uh, to launch our work. And we have added many partners to this. We have a list here of all of the different entities, not just nursing, but healthcare organizations that are supporting our work. And we have uh, an organizational chart um, that we're really pretty proud of. Here's the executive committee. And we have with it, Victoria Vinton, why don't you just raise your hand or stand up? Um, Victoria was a former student of mine <laughs> in, in health policy. And uh, she's just a perf perfect choice. She is a uh, almost full-time paid executive director for the Action Coalition. And uh, we have an advisory committee <clears throat> that is composed of business, uh, business people. And then we have three teams, the education team, the leadership team, and uh, the practice team. So it's, it's a great organization. And um, I wanted to share with you, oh, um, well, I'm not going to go back. But there is an article, I had a little citation in there, uh, that we put in Nursing Outlook about how we formed the Action Coalition and the model that we used to do that. So let me touch upon um, our track record, what we have been doing since we were formed. Uh, a major focus has been on education. Uh, the goal that the IOM set is 80% of nurses should be bachelor's degree nurses um, by 2020. So a grant was written and funded, a $150,000 grant, which we are still, we're in the process of completing. And the work is to collaborate with the, the NAND group, uh, let's see, Nursing um, Association, nursing. what? Assembly, that's right, nursing assembly, of uh, uh, nursing deans and directors. Um, <clears throat> all the schools of nursing, getting them together on this grant to agree on five competencies, a competency-based uh, education, whereby schools would agree that these are the five competencies that you need to be a bachelor's degree nurse. And hopefully then we'll uh, work this into their decisions about what they, um, uh, will give credit for, uh, practice-based experience, credit for on those competencies. It's not just RN to BSN education, because that's, you know, that's not the same. This is looking at competencies. So when we started, I'm going to say um, a little more than half of the nurses in the state had their bachelor's degree. In 2015, uh, about 62% of Nebraska nurses now say that they have their bachelor's degree. The other thing we focused on is practice. Uh, the Nebraska nurse practitioners did a fabulous job uh, for two years getting that legislation passed. The Action Coalition, we cannot lobby, uh, but we had a very active role in, in supporting their work. We uh, provided consultation, we had consultation meetings with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We looked at how other states had gotten this done. We sponsored workshops and informational sessions about what the legislation was and so forth. So in other words, we view ourselves as doing a lot of behind the scenes background work about raising the level of the conversation. And um, Linda Lejeure and I attended all of those um, 
legislative meetings, and we wrote an article, it will, it's uh, just out in Policy, Politics, and Nursing Practice on how Nebraska accomplished that. Um, so the other area that uh, the Action Coalition is looking at is diversity. Um, we are leading state efforts, actually, to diversify the workforce, and if you go to our website, um, I think Aubrey Arduna is, um, is very active in this, in, in leading this. And so on our website, you will see that there is a toolkit that's been developed. Um, there are educational strategies for different levels and even approaches for uh, employers on that. In fact, the work we have done in diversity, uh, we were recognized uh, by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and selected to host a national conference in June uh, for the efforts that we had done. And uh, lastly, leadership, and this is just so exciting and, and uh, validating to uh, be familiar with all the nurse young leaders that there are in this state. Um, <clears throat> we established a database for nurses that serve on boards, not only in healthcare settings or their employment, but in the community. And um, we are monitoring that. Um, I'll, I'll skip down to the bottom here. We've increased from 15% of nurses in 2013 to 634 nurses. How are we doing it? We're working with healthcare employers to educate them on the important role that nurses should have in um, healthcare system, healthcare decisions. And so a survey went out and asked employers, what are you doing and do, do you have nurses on boards and so forth. Based on how they responded, we uh, identified champion employers, uh, those employers who recognize that. And uh, they are uh, our partners in that. Uh, the other thing we started is uh, the 40 under 40. Uh, is anybody familiar uh, with the 40 under 40? Yeah, great uh, recognition program where um, young leaders <clears throat> are nominated, three, um, three people, uh, pardon me? We have one of those here too. Yay! We have, we have some uh, 40 under 40 leaders? Yeah. Wonderful, yay. Well, <clears throat> So on our website, uh, so we have um, we have quite we have way more that get nominated than what uh, we can select. But for the last three years, I think it is, uh, we have been uh, selecting and, and recognizing those leaders, and um, so uh, and then with them we uh, are developing a mentorship uh, program. I'm just going to do a little aside. We had the leadership conference. I'll talk about that um, a little bit later. But we had the leadership conference last week in Lincoln and had a panel of our young leaders. And it just gave me chills to see what is going on that we don't really know about uh, in, in the state and the tremendous work that these young nurses are doing. So, um, so this is what we have been doing the last um, four years. That said. We are looking at new directions for the Action Coalition. Um, not just for our state, but at a national level. Um, Dr. Hassmiller has, is moving, uh, we're sticking with the Campaign for Action, all those eight recommendations that we want to do, but we are moving toward now the culture of health, uh, which the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is sponsoring. And I have a hyperlink here. I'm, I'm not going to take time to show that. But you can go on the website to see exactly what the culture of health means. It means building a healthier America through nursing. And um, it is consistent with the mission of the Action Coalitions. It is just broader now uh, because we want to reach out and uh, move beyond what we're doing for our nursing workforce. and and extend, reach across, I think that was the term I heard, and work with others to improve health. Certainly mental health is uh, part of building health. And of course, to do this, it will require policy work and nurse leaders to get that done. So um, let me just show you the policy landscape moving forward. This model is uh, put forth by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and a model that we follow. You can see that the Action Coalition, we have these members in our group. 
And uh, we are working with the community. And the first step in this process is to assess needs and resources. So toward that end, um, there's a lot of data that is being collected, uh, measuring health county by county in Nebraska. And in this model, uh, for instance, we start by looking at health outcomes, which are based on length of life and quality of life. And so um, I didn't put it on here, I should have. It's, it's the county health rankings. Um, probably you've seen that before. But uh, here's a map of Nebraska. And the darker green is where, is worse, is, is where health outcomes are poor. And uh, by the way, I think they base this on age adjusted. Um, I looked at one of your slides about life expectancy and I, a thought occurred to me, but what, what are the demographics in that particular county? Did they, did they do age adjustment? Um, we also are uh, gathering data on health factors, not we, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is providing this. And so when we look at health factors, that includes things like health behaviors and all of these things, uh, clinical care and these things, uh, socioeconomic factors and physical environment. So again, darker the color, uh, worse the score on that. Now you can break, you can go on that website, you can break down uh, each of these individual uh, behaviors to find out what it is. This is an overall ranking. Uh, in regard to mental health, um, on that website, uh, people that said they had poor mental health days in uh, Nebraska, uh, you can see, um, I guess what we would say is that's a lot rural um, areas in the state. And uh, you can look at health provider comparisons. Now this data is not um, necessarily workforce data, it's from the uh, NPI registry. And uh, when we look at the latest data, this is 2015 data uh, in Nebraska, again this shows where the darker areas are where uh, we're really, really suffering. Of course, we're suffering all across the state, but, but these are uh, the worst uh, areas. Okay, so, so that's assessing the need. Um, the, we are also doing qualitative assessment and um, focusing, trying to focus now going forward on what's important. And to that end, last year, the Action Coalition sponsored a health summit uh, in October. It was statewide, we looked at the state by regions, and um, Victoria uh, put together really an excellent report on that, again, on our website. And I want to show you that if you go to this report that summarizes the findings of that, uh, and we looked at it by region, Omaha, Lincoln, Kearney, Norfolk, uh, you will, and you scroll down, you will see mental health pops up everywhere. So regions were asked to get together, this is an interactive workshop, to say what do you see as the major needs and so forth. And so these were, uh, this was Lincoln, this is what they identified as their needs. Kearney, mental health, right at the top, uh, Norfolk, et cetera. And then they developed proposed projects. Um, there's our model for that. Uh, proposal number one, and so forth. So I don't have time to go through these, but these, this is what um, people were, were saying. Um, okay. So um, the other uh, step now that we're at is choosing effective policies and programs now to um, make this work. And just last week we had our leadership conference. Dr. Hassmiller, Susan Hassmiller came and spoke and about how we can reach out and collaborate with different groups to make this happen. And um, so, we are in the process of deciding some of our new priorities, particularly in the practice area with the practice team. Uh, I can tell you one of the new things we are looking at is healthcare roles of community health workers. Um, I'm a public health nurse and community health workers are they're being used all over uh, the country, in Nebraska as well. Their role is not defined. We don't, we don't know what, how they're educated or, or what they do. Uh, Kathy Karsting with the uh, Department of Health and Human Services was selected to be a Robert Wood Johnson Public Health Fellow. She has a two-year 
um, fellowship, and her project is defining the role of the community health worker. She is collaborating with the Action Coalition on that. We've had some meetings uh, to begin with, and I, I put this up because I know from a grant I just finished, and we worked with the community health worker that was employed by um, in uh, Lexington, uh, Nebraska. They are looking at using community health workers in mental health. And they use community health workers in other states for mental health, in addition to all sorts of other things. Um, our community health worker worked on prenatal care, coaching, and so forth. So this is one of the things that the, the Action Coalition is looking at. The other thing is um, the practice team is looking for new areas of priority. And we had a meeting a couple weeks ago to look at residencies. One of the recommendations by the IOM was that there be residencies, not just for nurse practitioners, but for new graduates. We can't keep piling on more education at the undergraduate level. So the IOM says, you know what, nurses get out, they're generalists, they need to have residencies in an area especially. That's more than an orientation. It's a formal program. And a lot of times those should be shared between um, the employing organization and school. It shouldn't just be on uh, the burden of the school. So um, if you look, we have we talked about at this meeting psych residencies and um, or long-term care. Thank you. And I just want to show you that the New, New Jersey Action Coalition has a website where they've actually developed a uh, residency in long-term care. Um, Vanderbilt has developed a psychiatric nurse uh, residency, undergraduate and graduate. Um, this might be something as you leave, uh, as you work today, that you think about. And uh, if you uh, are interested, Deborah, uh, Deborah Conley and uh, Deb Kozny are co-leading that team, and it would be wonderful if you contacted them. Um, about your, your possible interest in that area. Last thing I want to end with was, um, so I teach health policy and um, uh, I read um, a lot and Dr. Bodenheimer is well known, um, he's a physician, for writing about healthcare system change. And he just came out with an article, uh, it was in the New England Journal of Medicine, about what's happening around the country and I was not aware of this. Um, in California, for instance, they passed legislation that RNs can change medication dosing using standardized procedures. That's, maybe you knew that, I didn't know that. Um, uh, the other thing he wrote about is that they are looking at more primary care NP residencies. That's his quote, not mine, um, in there. And that there are 37 such programs uh, in the country. And lastly, he mentions that um, it, to enhance the role of RNs, the undergraduate, uh, we need to change uh, the pay so that they actually get reimbursed for what they do. And uh, again, um, he thinks that this will be changing, but this might be something that um, we want to champion on behalf of expanding uh, nurses' full practice. That's all I have, and um, thank you. I, I think we're going to do the next presentation, is that right? And then do questions, okay. Okay, so I'm uh, going to finish up with a little poli extra policy stuff and kind of more focused on where we're at in the state of Nebraska. Um, I'm, we're, I'm Suzanne Gates. I work at Richard Young and um, Kearney, and, which is a division of CHI Health. And I'm also part of Beacon in Kearney, which is a, we have a rural focus. And so last year we had 74 students come through Kearney, um, Beacon, Richard Young, which is a significant amount of students that came through. Out of, se out of those 74, 65 of them showed interest in behavioral health, more interest in behavioral health after their experience with us. So it's, we have our boots on the grounds, we are, we are touching those people, we're talking to them, we're grabbing them, saying this will be a great experience. And um, I really feel like it's been a successful program and collaboration with Beacons, which is excellent. And now that I have the mic, I want to talk about um, 
the, the nurses that do come through and you know they're getting ready to graduate so on the exit interview I'm, I talk to them about what what are you going to go what area are you going to go into and it's very few of them that are going to go in psych but there are a couple that come to us that way and the others that go say go into ICU ER any of the other areas of nursing that they go to I want I explain to them that they can come work PRN for us anytime and um, <laughs> and gain that experience at the same time or if they want to come to work in psych they can also go float out to the other areas of our hospital and we're working on that program now so that we have those opportunities for those nurses that want to um, have dual specialties of sorts. So of course our objectives, we have that, that we're going to discuss the policy of Nebraska. 42% um, of the Nebraska population is considered rural. That's a significant number. So looking at the rural population and how we're going to um, access um, behavioral health psychiatric mental health, whatever words you want to use. I've been a psychiatric nurse for 32 years, and so I've used a lot of different words, and I, ha I feel like I have an interchangeable definition in them, and so I'll use them, but I, I don't think I could um, articulate that at this moment, so um, just to let you know. Okay, so 94% of the Nebraska counties are listed as healthcare provider shortage areas for psychiatric mental health. That's huge if we look at that. Nationally, now I'm not sure about these numbers because I've been listening to the other people that are talking and my source is a little different, and, um, the, but if we look at uh, even the trend that we're going from um, more nurse practitioners are coming into the workforce. So if you look at that, and that um, it, it tr almost tripled in an 11 year period and it's predicted to go even higher after that. So keeping those things in, are, in mind are important. Nurses are influential. We have a the largest workforce in the United States, RNs, um, LPNs, nurses in general, it's significant. We're in multiple clinical settings, we've talked about that. Um, Sherry had a list of specialties for psychiatric nursing that she showed from the APNA. There's lots and lots of areas of specialty we can go into, as well as the generalist um, areas of nursing. So we have those multiple clinical settings and significant numbers, so we need to be paying attention to policy. We need to be advocating for policy, and um, I, you know, I personally think it's my responsibility to advocate as much as I can at the local level, state level, federal, APNA, wherever, we, wherever my voice can be heard. So um, I encourage everyone else to do the same. So some of the specific bills, we talked about this, Mary t covered the legislative bill 107 that went into effect and there was a, um, a time period that it took um, for us to get that bill passed. And so part of that, of course, is that the nurses having authority, independent practice. Nebraska is the 20th state that grants independent practice in the United States. So there's more than, there's 50 states, right? So we're kind of right in the middle. So I feel like um, the takeaway from that is that Nebraska is recognizing that this is important. The nurses in Nebraska are understanding that we need to have that um, larger workforce. So that was effective um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, Sherry touched on um, the behavioral health integration, and this is a part of um, this is a part of Heritage Health, and it's a written in there that we're going to be having behavioral health integration in behavioral health setting or in primary care settings, and so that is they're working as ad, um, advisory committee working on that now. How is that going to be integrated? Beacon is very uh, integral in integration. There's um, some models that are out there that are being practiced now in Kearney and then an out, um, further out, um, I think it's in Norfolk or North Platte, I can't remember. But um, so we've got um, a voice in that too. And so integration is, I mean, that's the word that's going to be with us for a very long time. And nurses are key to that. I think they have um, the experience, we have the um, knowledge, and um, we just need to expand it and access it some, in some instances. So this, um, these, both of these um, bills are telling us that there's successes that we can build on, so we can keep going. Um, Legislative Bill 240 is the Behavioral Health Screening and Referral Pilot Program. Beacon UNMC in coordination with the region administrators are working on training educators on children's behavioral health screening and I think there was three, three sites and it was going to be expanded um, as, they get, as it replicates and is more successful. Let's see. I wanted to read a quote that will sound familiar. Um, 
it's on behavioral health integration, backing up just a little bit. And Sherry, this may sound familiar, and maybe your voice should read this, but um, <laughs> as Sherry's mentioned several times, there's no health without behavioral health. And individuals with serious behavioral health conditions often have untreated or undertreated physical health conditions. Bringing together the responsibility for managing these services is an important step towards recognizing the importance of treating the whole person in integrative settings. Sherry, that is well said and it's worth repeating over and over. So um, thinking about that integration again is very important. So. And then there's legislative resolution 413. And this is focused on uh, the Department of Health and Human Services and the Division of Behavioral Health to study issues related to uh, the behavioral health system in Nebraska. And so of course there's a needs assessment that needs to be developed and I, I think I overheard Sherry saying that that's coming to fruition and then there'll be a strategic plan that comes out of that need, needs assessment. So we'll be watching for that. And there's the site there that will probably be updated as that unfolds for us too. Susie, they're meeting today without the, me. They're meeting today they're without they're Sherry. The needs assessment from UNMC College of Public Health overview. So oh, gosh. Know. Well, we should have, like, <laughs> phoned a friend. We should oh, call him okay. in. So, so there'll be some great information that's coming out of that, too. Um, some other policies that I think that we just need to think about. Um, LB199 provides stipends for social work students to come into social work settings and pay for, you know, you know, I'm sure it's not a lot of money and I don't know the dollar amount, but I think of that and I think, well, there's somebody who's led the way. So there's maybe an avenue for us to reach out to the legislator and talk about some money for nurses. You know, maybe they want to kind of explore um, rural health or, you know, inner city, I mean, whatever they're interested in. So there's just some kind of things that have um, kind of led the way for us there. Um, and I think of those nurse residency programs that Mary was talking about, you know, maybe that would be a good place to um, look for a uh, lobby in that area as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, LB320 is adopting the Aging and Disability Resource Center. That is um, Nebraska, again, I think forward forward thinking, there's going to be one resource center for the aging population to go to to gain resources for health and other, other um, issues that they might have. So there's a huge opportunity for nurses, nursing there to look at the behavioral health issues that we're, um, our patients or our participants or whoever we want to have in our, um, give them resources so they can come and um, work through some of their aging issues or, you know, whatever um, depression or, you know, do some screenings at that point with them. So. Um, more um, other things, I mean, there's lots and lots of other policies out there. Um, there's um, nationally, the APNA has worked on uh, suicide uh, prevention. Um, there, the intent is to roll that out like CPR and that we end up having um, certifications um, at that level. I'm one of the facilitators that has been trained to do that. So um, if you would like to at your facility, just contact me and we'll figure out um, how to get that accomplished. And so you'll, I'll be sending out information about that in the future too. So the opportunities that we have, um, we have areas of clinical experience that need explored. We have integration settings that need to be developed. We have advocacy that we need to continue. The workforce, I think the workforce is available. We've talked about the education, bringing up new nurses. If we are the largest workforce in the United States, I think we need to find a way to, fig to educate the nurses we already have in place on behavioral health, psychiatric mental health nursing, and help them so that they aren't feeling helpless in the situations that they assess and may not know what to do with. So, thank you everybody for this morning. It's been a wonderful morning. And um, Mary, did you wanna come back up and see if there were any questions? <laughs>